here's a guy that's got a plan for your parts. You should look at the Trick or Treat Studios, House of a Thousand Corpses, Rip and Axe Professor. Once husband to Gloria Teasdale, matriarch of the Firefly family, after suffering a psychotic episode, he allegedly doused his son in gasoline and set him on fire. He is suspected of previously working with the criminal Dr. Satan. His current whereabouts are unknown. You could say that with the professor, he's greater than the sum of your parts. Before we get a closer look at the House of a Thousand Corpses, the professor... Let's grab the tape measure, and while I'm also measuring this guy, I'd like to thank the folks over at Trick or Treat Studios that did provide the sample we're about to have a look at. If you guys are interested, and would like to get your hands on the Professor or any of the other members of the Firefly family, I'll put the links down below in the video description. The Professor, in the meantime, stands five and a quarter inches in height, or the figure's about 14 centimeters tall. Well, let me just go ahead and say, I think we've come a long way when it comes to having a look at the House of a Thousand Corpse figures. This is now the fourth figure and one step closer to building ourselves the tiny firefly. Here's where we have left off if anyone's taking tally. First, we had a look at Captain Spaulding, figure licking, pistol whipping Captain Spaulding. Then after that, we had a look at Showtime Baby Firefly. And then just recently, we also had a look at Otis Driftwood. The only figure we still have yet to look at is Dr. Satan. And then, of course, we will be looking at the collector's case. The collector's case will not only give us a, a nice warm spot to store the Firefly family, but it also will complete Tiny Firefly as it comes included with the much appreciated, much needed, much required torso and headpiece of the figure. Speaking of Tiny Firefly for a moment here, the figure comes included also with the arm needed for Tiny Firefly. Although, in this case, again, we don't really have a torso to work with. So let's just bring in the loose parts that we have for right now. Two legs that came included with both Otis and also Baby Firefly. They're not going to really have the means to stand on their own. And then, of course, we do have ourselves an arm. We're going to get the other arm with Dr. Satan. And then, of course, we're going to need the torso and the head. That's going to come included with the collector's case. So again, while we don't have much progress to be mentioning right now, at least we do have three build pieces down with another two still to have a look at then of course professor also comes included with his big trusty axe look at the size of this axe not only is it nicely molded here with the handle looking somewhat plastic and wood but also when you look at the head of the axe i just love like little indentations and scratches and all the things that would go along with an axe that it's repeatedly been used Although in this case, there's no blood on the head of the axe. I thought that might have been one thing that they could have added onto the end of the axe. Ooh! And while it's not going to be drawing my own blood, I should never really joke about that. It's again a nice looking axe head. We can go ahead and fit this into the figure's hands. Now with the hands, actually, he does have a gimmick in the sense that you take the torso and you pull it back like that. And he basically swings his body around. It's a lot easier if you do it really, really fast. But the idea then is you're going to take the axe, just twist the hands around because, of course, he does have wrist articulation right here. We're going to take the axe and start with the top here and slide it all the way through and then meet it on the other end. And we're going to slide it then into the other hand of the professor. Now, I will tell you one thing that unfortunately comes by doing this is that uh, you may have already noticed there's a little bit of paint that has now started to flake off the handle. So I will likely, uh, when it certainly comes to displaying the professor, not probably do this a lot now that I've actually got the axe in his hand. Short of me just taking it out and looking at it for the rest of the review, the figure without it, I'm going to be putting the axe then back into his hand and always just displaying the figure with it. Now, with his arms having articulation also in the shoulders, you can kind of bring the arm up on one side, bring the arm down on the other, and yeah, that's a that's a good body for swinging. Now, again, with the gimmick, that's one nice thing that I like about this figure specifically is that this one has a little bit more of a play gimmick, very closer to what we got with Captain Spaulding. We didn't get as much of that really with Otis. Otis really only had a light-up lantern. And of course, baby Firefly didn't come in clue with anything, in a gimmick at least, but she did come in clue with Fish Boy. We can't forget about Fish Boy. The one other thing that also comes included here with the Professor, let's just put him down here for a second, is the tank that he has on the back of his body. The tank has been very nicely painted. you got some nice dark green down below here, the main silver tank, and then a tube of red that connects from the tank to the mouthpiece, the mask that he wears in front of his face. Now we're going to go ahead and pick the figure up and flip him around here. Located here on the back of his body, a little bit lower down by his spine, you can actually just take the, plague, the peg that's provided. And we're just going to go ahead and just fit that into the hole. And then from there, we're going to take the mask. Now with the mask, there is actually a little peg that you can see on the inside of the mask. That's then going to fit around. Uh, it's going to fit around and it's going to plug into the hole that's provided on his face. 
Now, the thing about it, though, is that the hose, the hose is warped getting this out of the packaging i may have to just heat the hose just a little bit because i find with the hose being kind of twisted that the way it is right now unless you turn it around this way maybe i'll just turn it around this way but i find like the hose sort of fights a little bit with you so i would probably suggest getting this figure for yourself and getting him out and loose decide how you want to have it displayed and maybe even just heat the tube just a little bit just to soften up the plastic just a little bit but with that peg, it does fit into his mouth. Although I would say put a little pressure on it because if you don't, sometimes the mask does come free. And especially when you are rotating the figure's head back and forth, sometimes that even helps to nudge that mask off his face. But it does complete a nice look for the professor. What a gruesome looking character this guy was. Uh, again, I really like the detailing that they managed to put into this piece for what really is a more stylized retro figure. Unlike the other figures we also had to look at before, this one does actually have a real loincloth with a real fabric that they actually used. Tears and rips and holes and all the stuff you would actually find in his loincloth are nicely handled here in the material that they used. The rest of the plastic body, again, I'm going to go ahead and remove the axe for right now. And again, there really isn't, I've been trying to think of a way, is there a way to remove the axe without having to pull the paint? And I don't think there is, because there is such a very tight grip that he has in his hands. Anytime that I've already removed the handle, you can already see like a little bit of the paint start to shred off the plastic. So after this review, this axe is going right back into his grip and it's going to stay there. I'm going to leave that to the side for right now, at least. Well, again, you know what? Let's go ahead and remove also the mask so you guys can see what the face looks like underneath. Not that necessarily the mask hides anything. He's just as disfigured and gross as he is, although it does cover at least the mouth area. You can see like sort of he's got this oozy slime pouring out the front of his mouth area here. So again, you can just take the mask, take that peg, plug it into the hole that's provided. He does have nicely painted goggles. You can see right there, the silver on the inside, the black making up the frame. The paint is actually really handled well on this figure. I think of really the figures we've looked at so far. The professor has some of my favorite paint applications. You can also see as well, there's some nice silver there added to the top of his head. Some really gory looking, gruesome looking torso that he has there also as well. Some burgundy added in there as well. Primarily, mostly kind of a brownish gray body. The one thing I also really like about this figure, just hold on one second while I'll go ahead and put the mask in front of his face. There we go. Uh, the one thing I also really like about the figure's body is he does also have the little bone frame that he has on his arms. Now, it doesn't seem to impede any bit of the articulation. To be really honestly fair, he only has it here in the shoulders. He can rotate the arms all the way around, and he, he also has wrist articulation. So really, you're never even going to have to worry that these bone frames are attached to the side of his body. They're actually attached here and a little bit further up here on the bicep also as well. And it does not look like they're removable. I think, if anything, removing them probably would likely break the peg. Down below here, just below the loincloth, is really the only part on the figure, really, when you look at it, that isn't finished. It's unfinished. It's just regular gray plastic. But again, like he does have like the tears. The tears here on the side are plastic. The front, obviously, here is, is, is a fabric material. The sides here are plastic. So it's not going to be as seamless of a look. But I like the idea that they at least gave you a plastic loincloth in the back. They probably could have either matched also used the same material here on the front and copied it also here, also in the back of the figure's body also as well. He's got some nice little bandages, some wrappings there across his body, big, large boots. And like Captain Spaulding, the professor also does have peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Not that any of these figures have come included with display stands, but if you did want to use a display stand from another toy company, it uses, once again, the same diameter sized peg. So simply just use those. For the figure's articulation, the head's going to rotate back and forth. Just a straight swivel, nothing more, nothing less. The arms do rotate all the way around. Just a straight swivel there. And he also has swiveled wrists. I thought initially he may have had swiveled uh, arms, but obviously, again, he's going to have the bone frame there. The, the kind of the arm frame that he has there in the movie. Obviously, there's no way that they would want to put articulation there in the elbow. So instead, they decided to put the articulation right here. He has leg articulation. You can also move those legs back and forth only just by just a little bit. And then, of course, when it comes to his waist, his waist has less really an articulated point as basically just more of a spring mechanism. Turning it too far, you can kind of see it does click like that. But it still managed to pull off a really successful swing, whether you have the axe in his hand or not. Speaking of axe, as we're 
going to wrap things up anyways. I want to get the axe also in his hands. And for me, again, while I am a little bummed that the paint is started to flake off the handles, I'm not, I'm not going to do this too often anyways. I think once I've done it this last time here, I'm going to leave it. Just leave it in the figure's arms anyways. It gives him a purpose, obviously not only for his gimmick, but the fact that the figure's hands are designed to be actually holding something, I obviously will want to be decide to display him, at least with his axe in his hands. Let's once again bring back the other figures we've already had a look at. There's Otis Driftwood, there's Baby Firefly getting her to balance. And again, the one that we started it all with, the second time we actually looked at that figure, is what he also looks like with Captain Spaulding. The only figure then still left to go through is, is Dr. Satan. Really excited to have a look at Dr. Satan. And of course, we are going to be looking at the collector's case. I've I've mentioned it several times already in these reviews. We're going to look at the collector's case, not only giving us a nice place to store these figures, if you aren't planning to put them on the shelf, I don't know why you wouldn't want to put them on the shelf, but a nice place to not only store the figures, but also the complete tiny, tiny, not so tiny, but we will be building him in an upcoming review. Based on the four figures we've looked at so far for the House of a Thousand Corpses, courtesy of the folks over at Trick or Treat Studios, I would say my personal favorites are Captain Spaulding and the Dear Professor. Now, that may also have something to do with the fact that both of the two figures also do have a gimmick built into the figure, unlike the Baby and the Otis we looked at earlier. Baby didn't come included with a gimmick, and certainly Otis did come with a light-up lantern, but it wasn't incorporated into his body, where I do like the idea of going back to like the old superpowers figures. I like the idea of actually being able to squeeze something on the figure, do something on the figure, have the figure doing something and that's one one of the reasons why i like captain spaulding because you could squeeze his legs together and he could flick his fingers up and with of course the professor i don't know how many times off camera i have been flicking this guy's waist around swinging his axe in his hands i think that's a fun gimmick to incorporate that with a figure now right now though with captain spaulding and the dear professor will that likely change though when we have a look at dr satan well certainly we'll have to stay tuned to find out if you guys though are interested to get the, these for yourself any one of the figures we've looked at or the complete set, they are available again over on Trick or Treat Studios website for, again, a very modest price point of $19.99. For those that wanted to add the $10 more, you can also get yourself the collector's case, which again, we will be spotlighting in an upcoming video. But once again, a big thank you to the folks over at Trick or Treat Studios that have again come through and provided the sample of the brand new Rippin' Axe Professor that we can have a look at in this review. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And are you nudging even the, even more closer to the idea of picking up these figures for yourself? Again, I you know again I think the price point is very reasonable. If that's the kind of thing that is the teetering thing as to why collectors may not pick up a figure, well I don't know. I would be tempted, but the figure price seems a little high for me. At nineteen ninety nine, it's very easy to be nudged in the direction of actually picking up these figures. Let me know if you guys are interested to pick up the figures for yourself. And again, if you guys enjoyed this video, want to hit it with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and on board to see not only Dr. Satan, but also, again, the collector's case, those will be coming up in upcoming reviews. Then make sure, yeah, you're hitting that subscribe button down below and you're also turning on the bell notification. The review of Dr. Satan coming your way. The review of the collector's case coming your way. Many reviews coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.